Thank you for being here with us today. It's good to be able to host you at the NASCOM Summit. Uh, do tell us about your thoughts on uh, India's uh, independence now currently growing at breakneck speed as a talent market and you know, in your belief in the fact that it's always been a good talent market for you. Right. Uh, pleasure being here. Thanks for inviting. Uh, we've at Mercedes-Benz uh, been in India heavily depending on the talent that's available for us. Um, it was it's changing over time. It was um, based on mechanical engineering, design, and you know, math mathematicians and physicists when it comes to CAE talent. As technology in the automobile is growing, uh, we've also been very surprised, pleasantly surprised to find a lot of talent in the space of digital software, going all the way to analytics, artificial intelligence, machine learning. Um, I've had the chance to discuss about India's talent. One place I really told them that it's a bottomless pit of talent actually, and continues to positively surprise us. Okay, I'm moving to uh, R&D. I think uh, this is one particular area which has really boomed in the past few years. And uh, uh, what is what is your vision for India as an R&D hub, so to speak? Uh, for Mercedes-Benz, um, while we depend on talent here, uh, the one thing that goes really well for us is that the product development is getting more and more digitized in several ways. And uh, nobody ever expected that the automotive product development would depend so much on digital. That digital would bring speed, efficiency, cost, and time saving uh, to such a large extent. That testing could depend so much on digital and on development that the CAD CAE loop could be so well utilized um, that you could front load development so much uh, based on digital. And this is exactly what we are harnessing out of the India team. Though the markets are far away from us um, sometimes, and the headquarters is also far away from us, the Indian talent is able to kind of fantasize the product in the computer and can go on through the development cycle. Uh, you know, we have a vision that we're going to go more and more digital in development of the car, the bus, truck, and the van that we're working on. And uh, it plays perfectly into the talent that we find here, into the kind of computer science expertise that we find here. Software is also gaining a, a big importance within the car. While it was restricted to only control units, uh, which are, by the way, already a few dozens in a, in a, in a big car like ours, but uh, the amount of software-defined architectures, the amount of software-defined customer features that are changing in the car is also playing really well into what the talent can deliver from India for, for a car like ours. Um, when one says R&D, normally I think uh, India is not really the top destination that comes to one's mind. Uh, I'm hoping that that radically changes in the years to come. So, uh, what do you think are the main challenges that come in the way of us becoming that top R&D hub, whether it's in Asia or globally? Right. Um, I think when it comes to R&D, um, first of all, India has had, um, may I say, an unfair start with IT over R&D in a way. India has lacked an own engineering uh, you know, address of sorts. And that's kind of played into why global players should choose India as a destination for R&D. That's on one hand. We have an additional challenge. Um, I sometimes say India is not an automotive country. Doesn't mean we don't drive a multi-million car market, but I don't find people with diesel in their blood, as I say, right? So that means the passion to deliver automobiles and develop automobiles is something that's not so prevalent uh, in the country. It's not a Detroit, it's not a Stuttgart of, of sorts. But on the other hand, digital is a great leveler. I'm coming back to the fact that digital in development has kind of uh, made the world of development and R&D kind of flat. Uh, it brings the possibilities to contribute to a product from far away, and uh, that's exactly how we kind of contribute more and more in newer areas that we never dreamt of. So, of course, uh, strengthening the R&D base a little bit, uh, it will be good to hear from you about some of the technologies that Mercedes-Benz is working on right now and how they are so cutting edge and you know, defining the market at this point. Right. Um, we have been looking at a car and uh, our CEO um, has recently been quoted saying a car seems to be turning into a software product on wheels. And uh, I think that's going to, there's a lot of, you know, uh, change in, in what he's saying. There's a lot of uh, weight in, in that statement because if you kind of try to define not so much laying importance on the metal and rubber that comes with the car, but so much on the software that goes on to define the car on one hand, but also the customer functionality that they see on the other hand, uh, the focus on R&D is, is going high. To your question about technologies uh, that we are focusing on in India is directly you know, coming out of, derived out of what I just said. On one hand, it's uh, very important to still have good designers. Um, people with mechanical engineering backgrounds and great design experience who can design the product for us. We are relying heavily on CAE, computation-aided uh, engineering. There's a lot of uh, mathematicians, physicists who kind of 
testing out the concepts, developing new methods, bringing physics and equations back into the computer to, to be able to kind of you know, uh, solidify our designs. We are writing millions of lines of code like never before at an OEM, meanwhile, and uh, India centers in Bangalore and Pune contributing heavily for us on that. We've gone on uh, to crunch a lot of data at Mercedes, uh, call it big data analytics, um, giving out science to R&D on one hand, sales and marketing on the other, manufacturing setups around the world where we're crunching data and telling them what patterns we see. Recently, uh, when at Las Vegas this year, we launched a new car with the MBUX entertainment system, which is heavily depending on a, a super nice feature, new feature uh, based on gesture recognitions. You can just gesture to your head unit with your hands kind of recognizes what you want to do. Uh, that's based on AI technology, and we've brought in a lot of vision-based AI recently into the car. And it's just the starting. Uh, we think that we can contribute many new upcoming ideas. We've been working with a lot of GPUs. Quantum computing is the next thing. Uh, while these are buzzwords, and the industry is kind of toying around with what it does within the car, some of them have already found a place within the car, and the Center from India is contributing, working heavily on that. That's good. I think it's uh, notable. I think it's something that should pause and uh, think that you know there is a definite change in the narrative and I think innovation is now taking that uh, central you know uh, it's, it's in center stage when it comes to the dialogues that are being driven so while we all have these deliberations events like this and you know meetings where we're talking about the way ahead uh, when it comes to global conglomerates like universities I think you know uh, it's nice to understand or to be good to hear from you what your global counterparts have to say about this stride India is taking you know from from an innovation perspective I think for them also it's a change in perception so what are your uh, what is the what is the buzz really outside of India? Right. Yeah. So uh, absolutely, I think the the perception of India and Indian R and D especially has gone several notches up with the kind of uh, work products, deliveries, contributions that they're getting out of the country. It's uh, not only true for automobile, but speaking of Mercedes, uh, we've grown significantly by numbers, by value, contributing you know at much higher levels of product value creation right now out of the Bangalore Center. I had a board member for R&D, responsible for R&D, who had come into Bangalore. He's a regular visitor here. And he was kind of talking to the press. They were asking him, you know, what do you get from, from India and from your Indian R&D center? By the way, we are the largest R&D center for Mercedes outside of Germany. Uh, and therefore, it was a, an expected question. Um, he, he went on to kind of note the contributions that we're doing, and I think he beautifully summarized it uh, eventually for the press. He said, there's a bit of India in every Mercedes, meanwhile. And that kind of summarizes um, how they look at us right now, especially in the context of, of Mercedes-Benz. That's really good to know. That's, that's fantastic. So a little bit uh, as a signing thought, uh, signing off thought, basically, what do you see now that finally there is so much of focus on R&D, and it's, it's taking a concrete shape, you know? Uh, across the board, what is the future really like for R&D? Where do you think it should now go? The next decade, what does it look like? I think where we are with mobility at the societal levels, actually, uh, where people are kind of trying to figure out if they really need a car to go from point A to point B, would they like it shared, would they like it autonomous, uh, how much would they enjoy services in a connected car, and how much of electric or combustion should it be? R&D has an even bigger role to play in kind of solving some of these technical challenges and setting up the society for, I think, the next century of mobility. We invented the car in 1886, you know, kind of put four things on uh, four wheels and, and a metal end and been driving it luxuriously, people around the world, for so many years now. Now we are at the juncture where we have to redefine mobility, and I think engineers, again, have a big role to play in all ways uh, to redefine that. Uh, just, I mean, with your permission, of course, are you okay to talk about uh, the electric vehicles part of it, or is that, is that does it come under your purview? Or, uh, it does, but that's not something we want to talk about okay, right now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah.